Hello and welcome to the Gary Dunn Show for October 30th, 2018. I'm your host, Gary Smith, and on today's show we're going to talk to Coach Dunn about uh, this past Saturday's game against Slippery Rock, and then we're going to take a trip around the PSAC and look at scores and standings and then up and review and preview the upcoming week's opponent, the Seton Hill Griffiths. But Coach, uh, thanks for coming in this morning. Uh, it was a uh, bright and sunny day. It was, Absolutely. you know, it was finally we haven't had seen the sun in about I think three weeks here. So I agree. Good to be back with you guys for another week and uh, talking about Balkan football. And definitely, like I said, Saturday um, was the opposite of this weather. Uh, I think we did high school football on Friday. We were at Best Center, and as soon as we pulled in there, it started raining. And I don't think it stopped raining uh, this weekend until about Sunday afternoon. But um, like we were talking off the set, this time of year, that's what. Every team's dealing with you, kind of got to go with it, but it doesn't make it any more fun, though. Yeah, well, I guess it was better weather than two weeks ago, but, mm. <laughs> you know, constant rain all day long, and, uh, you know, that Western Pennsylvania this time of year, that's what you're going to get. And going into the game Saturday, uh, everyone knew what the stakes were. Um, both California and Slippery Rock were tied atop the PSAC West, so it was a pretty much a de facto PSAC West championship game. Um, and it was kind of a – the ebb and flow of the game was a little interesting. It seemed like the very beginning of the game, special teams for both teams – set both offenses up, will set Slippery Rock up, and then your special teams took it back the next way. A lot of scoring in the first six minutes of the game, and then it seemed like it settled into a def defensive struggle for about a quarter and a half. Yeah, they you know, obviously started the game. They got a nice kickoff return on a reverse and, and got past midfield and put a drive together and, and 7 nothing on, on the first drive of the game. Uh, they kick off to us, and Nazir Taylor, a true freshman out of Woodland Hills, uh, did a really nice job. The whole unit um, did, did a nice job on that. We were able to split one, and... And, you know, 10 seconds later, it's 7-7, seven, seven, <laughs> and, and we got a ball game. So really proud of the way that, that the kickoff return team come out. They've been growing all year. We've got a bunch of young guys that are playing on that team. Uh, we weren't doing a great job early in the year. And, and obviously, when you have young guys that are learning how to do things and learning how to play college football, that's not the case. But you've seen that group grow and grow, and, and now they're a big weapon for us. We're doing a really nice job in that phase, and, and obviously Saturday that showed on a big play. And that's got to help uh, all phases of the game because, as you said, the, the, the unit has been improving. But if you look at some of the games, your, your average start for your offense has gone from probably like the 27, 28-yard line to about the 40, 45-yard line. That's got to be great for the offense, knowing that you know it's essentially a short field. Yeah, and, and that's what Coach Wilson, who does a great job at our special teams, preaches. He preaches, you know, getting grass and, and field position for the offense, and then obviously pinning the the opponent deep and, and, and getting field position for the defense. That's kind of our special teams philosophy. And, and Saturday they did a nice job of that. And on Saturday, he had two pieces of the puzzle back with Jordan Dandridge suited up and uh, Chad Livingston suited up, and it seemed like in the game that the, one of the game plans was trying to get them the ball a lot and. and Chad Livingston had a lot of tough catches over the middle. Yeah, you know, Ch Chad's a, a, a tremendous competitor. Um, he really hasn't practiced much in the last two weeks, and we actually got him cleared on Thursday to participate. We had a, a couple injuries during the game that, that his role had to increase. Um, it's that time of year everybody's banged up and bruised, and, and Slipper Rocket does a, a nice job of stopping the run. That's kind of what they're known for. Mm -hmm. They're only giving up. 94 yards a game. Uh, we thought we had a good plan going in to take advantage of some of the stuff we're doing. And, you know, it, it worked at times. And other times we, we didn't execute and, and for whatever reason didn't, you know, didn't execute. But, you know, give Slippery Rock credit. They did a nice job defensively. And, and you know, I don't know that we played our best game offensively. Um, you know, and, and that's kind of the way it worked all day long. Well, what kind of a boost does that give your, your team uh, coming out of the locker room, knowing that those two guys who hadn't been in the offense or hadn't been in the lineup for a couple of weeks, and um, kind of, you know, got cleared kind of last minute. That, does that give yeah. a little bit of a boost to the team, or is yeah, it business as usual at that you point? You know, it, it does, and, and I think the, the nice thing for us right now is we have a lot of depth at wide receiver because of the injuries we've had this year. You know, Derek Haraway has come a long way and is, is really starting to play well. Another, you know, a redshirt freshman. Um, and Azir Taylor's playing some. You've got Cam Tarrant, who, who you know, played the first two series. I think he caught two balls in the first series, and then we lost him with an injury. On Saturday, um, you know Tyson Hill has stepped up. So our depth at wide receiver is really good. But anytime you can get two guys back like Jordan and, and Chad, Jordan Dangers and Chad Livingston, you know it's 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 good for your morale. Uh, you know Jordan has, has been fighting a high ankle sprain for you know three four weeks. Uh, he had limited practice time on, on this week and, and really just got cleared on Monday and, and really his first week of practice. So. Hopefully these next two games he'll continue to, to feel better and develop. But, you know, I like our depth at wide receiver right now just because of the injuries we've had. And we've got some really, really talented kids in that group. We just got to do a better job of, of 
of executing, getting them the ball, and, and allowing them to make plays. And on the other side of the ball, you know, we everyone knew coming into the game of Slippery Rock, pretty dynamic offense. And I thought, for the most part, defense did a good job of, of containing them, for some turnovers. But like like we said last week, and everyone was talking about online, they have a really, they can do a lot of things on that offensive side of the ball. They can, and you know, um, offensively we put them in some tough spots. Mm -hmm. You know, we turned the ball over a couple times. Our field position that we talked about on the they got a couple kickoff returns. Uh, but our defense battled all day long. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it wasn't our day. You got to tip your 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 hat to Slippery Rock. They did a nice job, and and they were the better team on Saturday. Uh, you know, proud of our effort though on defense. Those guys battled all day long. You know, there's obviously some things we could have done better as a, you know, as an entire coaching staff and, and, and as offense, defense, and special teams units. But you got to tip your hat to Slippery Rock. They did a nice job on Saturday. I think one of the things uh, on Saturday that, that was very well done was the pass rush. It seemed like your defense, linebackers and linemen, were getting into the backfield an awful lot on the passing downs for uh, Slippery Rock and forced. Uh, I know there was a, a fumble that was forced uh, midfield and then towards. Um, the red zone for, for Sleep Rock forced, uh, the pass rush forced a bad throw into a turnover for California. Yeah, they, you know, our defense does a nice job. They play with, with great confidence and, and they're aggressive. And, and the thing for us is, is typically when we create turnovers, we have success. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, they, they created a couple turnovers and had opportunities to, to create a lot more and the ball just didn't bounce our way. You know, I think they fumbled six times. I think we may have got two of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's one of those games where it was, you know, you're looking at it 17-14 at halftime. We're at home. We feel really good about it. We come out in the second half, and, and, and we just could never get anything wrong. We had a lot of pre-snap penalties. You know, we had a big holding call. We had some drops. We had some things that, you know, is, is not typical of, of California football. And what we talked to our guys about yesterday is, is, you know, let's learn from this. You know, we're going to be in a situation again where we're going to, you know, here at California, we're going to play big football games. Let's learn from this. Let's grow from this. Let's, let's think what we could have done better as a coaching staff, as a program, as players, as individuals, and, and move forward. Uh, you know, we can't get this one back. Our guys are extremely disappointed. When you set your goals as high as we do here at California, you know, sometimes you come up a little bit short. And, and what I talked to the guys about yesterday is how do we respond? You know, what do we do from here? Um, we're going to reset our goals. Our goal is to be 1-0 at the end of this week. And, and you know, we had a good workout last night. I, I know the character of guys in our program, in our room. I'm, I, I, I'd be surprised if we don't have a great workout today. And let's take a look back at this past weekend's action against Slippery Rock. And then we'll preview this upcoming week's opponent, the Seton Hill Griffins. You're watching The Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV. here a lot of space up on that field here nobody around he's got one man to beat he's got to be Jake Chaplin he's heading the whole way down the field Rivers has this one it's going to be a handoff to Hills Hills breaking towards that far side and he is into the end zone Rivers dropping back to throw this one Feeling the pressure, trying to roll out. Falls out as London Clapp strips it from the backside. California falls on it. The handoff to Brown once again. Brown plowing towards that outside, and he finds his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Vulcans. Rivers, a little bit of a low snap, able to hold on to that one. He surveys, looking for a man. Rolls out to the far side, still looking for a man here. California pressure, forced well, to get rid dangerous. of this one. It's going to be intercepted. <laughs> Up the middle here for West Hills. West Hills breaking towards that pylon. Slices and dices and makes his way into the end zone for a rock touchdown. Mitchell drops back, throws this one. It's going to be intercepted by the rock here. Eric Glover Williams charging for the end zone, and that one is in. It will be a touchdown for the Rock. We have the Brown. Brown barreling his way forward, still staying on his feet, heading towards that end zone. He's got one man to beat, shagged <laughs> off him, and it is a touchdown for the Vulcans. Rivers with the handoff to West Hills. West Hills pushing his way towards the end zone, and he tumbles on in there for a Rock touchdown. Saturdays are for 
the Vulcans. At Ohio Dominican. At Kutztown. At Chippensburg. Home versus Edinburgh. Colbo versus IUP. At Clarion. Homecoming versus Gannon. At Mercyhurst. Home versus Slippery Rock. At Seton Hill. Home versus Westchester. Catch all the action live on CUTV and WCAL. Are you a visual storyteller? The Cal Times and CUTV is looking for students with an interest in expanding their skills in photography and videography. We call it visual journalism, and we're here to offer you opportunities to learn how to shoot and edit from a wide range of events at California University of Pennsylvania. Our focus is on local coverage of sports and news events from campus and around the region. We provide on-site training as we help you develop your skills as a visual multimedia storyteller for the Cal Times newspaper and CUTV News Center. To learn more about visual journalism opportunities and join our team, visit our media production facility in the Natale Student Center or email the Cal Times at caltimes at calu.edu. the flag here but right now if it stands it's a touchdown for California as the punt from Matt Stewart is on the ground and this one is blocked he is able to not pick it up and California will pick it up as he gets tripped up there as uh, he is and Nick Grissom goes right up that hole for a touchdown they're gonna the ball came out but they're gonna call him a touchdown right away there As Bird with the handoff, and this is going to be a touchdown for Seton Hill right up the middle of the field. Here, handing off to Jalen Bell, and Bell gets into the end zone for a California touchdown. Seven yard field goal for William Brazil. The kick is up, and it is good for William Brazil. Strong looking to pass. Airing it to the end zone. This is complete. What a catch there. As the snap is away, the kick is away. This one is up. And it is good. California adds three more, 30 to 21. Looking to pass. Under pressure, over the middle. This is caught for the touchdown. That is John Mackel, the fourth. Here, handing it off to Wheeler. Wheeler has an open space and he's into the end zone, untouched for the California touchdown. Looking to pass, goes to the end zone. This one is complete. What a catch by Michael Elardo. Sideline asking for some more noise. Kristen Strong floating Wide it. Open. Wide open there is Sonique Sweeting. He goes untouched to the end zone. Seton Hill scores and takes the lead. Play action. He's gonna go in the end zone himself. Pump fake going deep down the field and it's gonna be intercepted by Lamont McFadder. McFadder should just take a knee and he will.
California wins it on a Lamont Fatter interception. And welcome back to the Gary Dunn Show. What you just saw was highlights from last year's game against Seton Hill. And as both me and Coach looked at each other and looked at the highlights, it seems like that was about five years ago. It's hard to believe that it was just about a maybe about a week over three, uh, one year ago that yeah. that game was played. But uh, just goes to show you how how quick and how long how quick the seasons are, but how long the seasons yeah, are. That can't it, really remember something that happened just a year ago. Yeah, that's a that's like I said, that seems like it was <laughs> forever ago that, that we played those guys. And Seton Hill's one of those teams that you know, whenever they joined the PSAC a few years ago, um, I think everyone kind of realized that this would, was going to become kind of a rivalry. It's the small, like the shortest distance between California and any of the schools, and you know, something just in your backyard is always going to develop into a rivalry. I mean, this year, uh, the Seton Hill not having probably the season they were hoping for, but you know, we saw that they had a win a couple weeks ago, so you can't sleep on them, and especially in a game that, you know, last two years, same thing on paper, but they kept it close. So what? What's the message, or how do they look like on tape? I know you guys yeah, can watch you the know, tape. Yeah, they haven't had the type of season that, that they wanted to, but I tell you what, they're, they're, their guys play hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, they beat Mercyhurst a couple weeks ago. They were down big to Mercyhurst and didn't quit and came back all the way and, and ended up winning that game. Um, you know, they've got a good scheme, and they've got really, really good skill players. And they probably have the, the premier receiver in the league on offense. They have a quarterback that's doing a really nice job. They put up some points. Uh, you know, in, in, in college football, it's tough to win one game, mm -hmm. and, and for whatever reason, they haven't put it together, but they are still battling and competing and playing hard. You know, last year, I mean, we had to score in the last possession of the game, so I know our guys will be ready uh, and, and prepared, and, and it's about playing 60 minutes of football. It's not, you know, here at California, we preach to our guys, it's about the next play, it's about what we do, it's not about any week what anybody else does. So you got to go out, you got to execute. You know, those guys are on scholarship, too, and they're going to play hard and, and, and try and get a win and defend our home field. So, you know, we better be ready to play. And you took the words out of my mouth on offense. It seems like they always have one or two skill players that, that can really just fit on any team and also end up being an all-star. Uh, who, uh, who are some of the players to watch this, this year? You know, uh, the, the running back's really good. He's an explosive kid. And then number 17, uh, the wide receiver, like I said, is probably, you know, leading the rece leading the, the, the conference in, in catches and touchdowns. And the, they do, and their, their coaches do a nice job of finding ways to get him the ball, finding ways to get him in space. Um, you know, and the quarterback's doing a nice job, you know. So, Defensively, you look at it, it, they got, you know, the one defensive end, number 44, is a really good player. They got active linebackers. They've got a safety, number three, that's a, I, I believe is a really good player. You know, they've got really good skill guys. And, you know, for whatever reason, they haven't put it together. But it's, you know, every week in the PSAC, I've said it every week since I've been here, is <laughs> you better show up and be ready to play because I, I know they will be. Their coaching staff will have those guys ready. And it seems like, you know, early in the season, every road trip you had was a, a north of about four and a half hours or average about four hours or so. Uh, anything different since the the game is basically in our backyard? Thirty minutes, thirty five minutes down the road. Yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll have a little walkthrough on Saturday morning, and, and we'll eat, eat a pregame team meal here on campus, and then we'll get on the bus and drive up, uh, you know, what thirty five forty mm -hmm. minutes up the road, and, and and be ready to play. So, you know, this is our first trip away game that, that hasn't been an overnight trip, mm -hmm. just kind of the way it worked out this year and the distance and in, in, in times of the games. Uh, we've been you know loading the bus on Friday at some point usually you know, after dinner or right before dinner and, and, and traveling to the game. So I think it'll be good for our guys to spend another Friday night at home. I know we've talked in the past. It's, you know, as a college athlete, you don't get much time off. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get Sundays off and then you've got, you know, weights and study table and classes and practice. You know, Friday night's really a time where, where our guys can relax and hang out together when we're home or a game like this where we're leaving Saturday morning. And this game's going to be at noon on Saturday, so make sure to make the short trip down to Offutt Stadium in downtown Greensburg, um, historic Offutt Field, and I'm sure we'll have some trivia questions about that during the game. Uh, if you can't make the trip, CUTV and WCA will have you covered. The game will be live on CUTV's YouTube page, CUTV Sports 1, and it'll be live on 91.9 .9 FM WCA. But before we end the show today, Coach, once again, we've got to go through and put a ribbon on this past week and see what everybody did last week and what's happening this week in standings and all that fun stuff. So we're going to take a look at the scoreboard first in the PSAC West. I see this upcoming week's opponent, Seton Hill, was at IEP, uh, lost 56 to 14. Uh, Edinburgh and Clarion uh, in a close defensive struggle, 14 to 7. Edinburgh gets the win. In a game that's always uh, just, there's always crazy storylines and, and twists and turns. The, the battle for the Niagara Cup up there in Erie, uh, Mercer beats Gannon 38 to 21. Now over in the PSAC East, uh, 
Westchester and Quitstown, they basically played in a PSAC East Championship game last week, and Westchester goes on the road to beat Quitstown 38-21. to uh, Shippensburg and Lock Haven uh, put a lot of points on the board. Shippensburg going up to Hubert Jack Stadium, winning 56-37. Uh, Bloomsburg going to defeat Millersville at home 38-14. And then um, Ohio Dominican, team you're familiar with from the past couple years, goes to East Stroudsburg 48-35. to And a little bit of interesting trivia, Coach Danny Downs retires with about four seconds left in that game. And Yeah, it, good, good for him. Uh, you know, we, we were talking about his coaching staff. I think it was his 45th mm -hmm. year, if I'm not mistaken. There's no way, <laughs> absolutely no way I could make 40-some 40, 40 years. He's, he's a really nice guy, really, and just happy for him that, that he went out that way. So good for him. Well, and it's funny when you said, when I looked at the number of years, I'm thinking he, he was almost at the PSAC at the very beginning because PSAC has yeah. only been around for 60-some years. So he's been definitely the elder statesman of the coaching ranks in the PSAC in probably every sport. Yeah, he's a guy that I got to talk to at a couple of clinics and conventions and, and just picking his brain and, and – you know, really interesting guy to talk to, and then obviously we played them mm -hmm. uh, out there last year and, and got to spend a little bit of time with him. Just a classy guy, and for him to, you know, dedicate that much time to that university. And I think that if, if, if I read it correctly, he's gonna he's gonna stay on <laughs> in some role in the athletic department. So uh, good for him that he's he's a class act. Well, congratulations, Coach Dowd, on retirement. I know uh, his interim head coach uh, Jimmy Terwilliger. I remember yeah. seeing him as a player. He was a heck of a quarterback. So changes afoot out there. Uh, let's look at the PSAC West standings. See, Slippery Rock has clinched the West, uh, then IP California, Edinburgh, um, and the rest. And if we look at the PSAC East, we're going to see a star next to Westchester's name because they get the the uh, the clinching game over Quitstown, um, and they're five and zero, four and one. You can see uh, Bloomsburg at four and two, and I believe Bloomsburg will be the team we'll be playing yes. in that last week in a couple weeks. So we'll preview them uh, in next week's show. And let's take a look at this upcoming week's schedule. Full slate of action in the PSAC. Uh, highlighted by three noon games, of course, our game at Seton Hill, Clarion at Mercyhurst, IEP at Edinburgh, um, and another three games at the 1 o'clock hour, Bloom at West Liberty, so that's a non-conference game, East Stroudsburg at Shippensburg, and Gannon at Slippery Rock. And then there's one lone game at 2 o'clock, Lock Haven and Westchester, and the 4 o'clock nightcap, Quitstown at Millersville. And Coach, we always ask, if you're not going to pay attention to our game as a fan, what's another game you want to watch as a fan? Yeah, uh, I think the Indiana at Edinburgh game. Edinburgh plays really well at home. They've they've kind of been up and down a little bit, kind of like us, mm -hmm. um, you know. But they they they've got a good good defense and, and they can put some points on the board. So I think that'll be a, a pretty good game. And you can keep track of all those games uh, on the PSAC uh, Sports .org website. And of course, for all of our information about Kai Athletics, Matt Kai and staff does a wonderful job. So check out their website at www.calvulcans.com. Coach, uh, we've come to the end of another show and. Uh, Good luck on Saturday, and uh, we'll see you down, down I-70 in Greensburg. Yeah, we'll see you, see you right down the road. Appreciate the coverage you guys give us, and, and you know I know our guys will battle this weekend. And once again, if you can't make the trip, uh, we encourage you to make the trip. It's a beautiful trip down to Greensburg. Um, see you TV and WCR has you covered. See you November 3rd at noon. Uh, so come on down and enjoy the afternoon, if not 91.9 FM live, and see TV Sports 1 on YouTube. So for Coach Dunn, I'm Gary Smith. You're watching The Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV.